Hello, in today's video, I will be performing a CFD analysis on a Tesla valve. A Tesla valve is a one-way valve with no moving parts. It allows flow in one direction, but not in the other, using the principle shown here. I got the geometry from GrabCAD, just download the files. and then open them in SOLIDWORKS. I then delete all the unnecessary features along with their sketches. Then modify the base sketch to be able to create a surface of the fluid domain we want to analyze in the CFD software. Once the sketch is modified, insert a planar surface. And here it is. I'm just going to change the appearance to more easily see the geometry. Now save the file as a parasolid. I've seen videos where SOLIDWORKS parts are directly imported into ANSYS, but I've had no luck trying to do that myself. Now open your ANSYS workbench and import the parasolid. Now we edit it in Design Modeler to generate the surface. And that's it, your geometry is in ANSYS. Now we open the meshing tool. This may take a while, so I skip ahead. and I am now going to create the name selection. The easiest way is to select all and then deselect the inlet and outlet because there are so many different components in the wall, it would take longer. Now just press N and name your boundary condition. I'm going to specify an inlet, an outlet, the wall, and then the front and back plane because this is a 2D analysis. Now we can just generate the default mesh. which in this case is not very high quality. So I'm just gonna go through a few different options and refine down the mesh. The level of refinement you choose on the mesh is fully up to you. Be warned though that finer meshes increase calculation times, not only because there are more calculation points, but also because you have to lower your time step size due to the current number. As always, I check my mesh quality by plotting the orthogonal quality of the cells. I'm going to choose an all quad method.
and refinement. I find that the refinement option improves the quality of your mesh greatly. This mesh isn't optimal, but it's good enough to work with, and I'm going to make it a little bit more simple just so this calculation runs faster. Remember to ensure that you're exporting the mesh in the correct format. And now we can just export the mesh to the project folder you choose for this calculation. I'm just going to make a new folder and make sure not to have any spaces in your folder name. Linux doesn't like spaces in file names. Now just save the mesh to your chosen location. I'm just going to call it mesh. Now we can pull up our Ubuntu terminal and change to the appropriate directory. Like in my last video, I'm just going to use piece of foam and a large eddy simulation. And you can open up your directory with the command explorer.exe followed by a space and then a period. And I'm just going to copy over all the contents of the pits daily folder. That way I can show you a little bit more in depth how I go about setting up the boundary conditions in the calculation. As you can see, all the folders are default. Now we're going to translate our mesh into open foam using the following command. And as you can see, now we have a poly mesh. Now open the file and ensure that your boundary conditions have the correct names. I just need to change the front and back one. Everything else looks good. It is always a good idea to check your mesh in pair view. I'm just going to navigate to my project folder and open up the mesh. Open up the mesh with the open foam reader. Now I'm going to make sure I know the direction I want the flow to go in. So I'm just going to display the inlet and see that it's the flow needs to go in the negative x direction. Now we're just going to open up our zero folder and change all the boundary conditions in there. For this problem, I'm using a velocity inlet at one meter per second, negative one meter per second. And I simply called the wall wall, so I'll change the boundary conditions for that too. And front and back one matches what we already need. I'm just going to keep the fairly default boundary conditions for this, but you can go more in depth and adjust things. Notice that in open foam, we need a boundary condition for the front and back, which is just an empty condition. You need this so open foam can recognize it as a 2D problem. Now I'm just going through all the files and making sure they match the boundary conditions I want.
Okay, and now it's always a good idea to check your mesh. And our mesh looks okay, so I'm going to run the piece of foam command and then stop it using control C to check the current number. We want this current number to be from zero to one, so we can just adjust our time steps accordingly. And make sure your write interval is correct for the results you want. This won't affect the calculation, just the post-processing. Now I run it using the piece of foam command one more time and stop it to check that the current number is indeed on the order of magnitude that I wish and just run the calculation. And I always check that the first time step loaded. Okay, now I'm just gonna fast forward through the calculation And the calculation is complete. Now we're just going to write our results file using the touch results.foam command. Now we're just going to display our directory and see that all the time steps along with the results file are in there. Now delete the mesh and open up the results file. Click apply. I'm just going to load the variable s to visualize the flow. And you can indeed see that the flow is following the behavior we expected. Now we can just change to an appropriate color map. And that's it. There's our Tesla valve. Here are some of the results from a more refined calculation I did with a Tesla valve running in the incorrect direction. And you can see how the flow is obstructed by the geometry of the Tesla valve. Thank you for watching. As always, please like, subscribe, and share the videos if you like what I'm doing. And as always, leave any comments or suggestions. Thank you.